All right, having had a taste of the most basic data manipulation and reading in R, you're probably going to want to move on next to creating graphics, which is one of the biggest and most popular uses of this particular sort of software. And I'd say you're right about that. There's a few ways you can do it. There are the graphics functions from the base files, which we already have installed. There are graphics from a set called Lattice Graphics that a lot of people enjoy. And there's a third set called ggplot, which is more popular in my estimation and has an easier functionality along with more fine-grained control of what you can do. So for the sake of this course, we're going to be using ggplot and that's what you'll find most folks are using. So how do we get that ggplot package into R, loaded and ready? And the answer is you can do it actually from within R itself. You can go operate a couple commands at the command line terminal here and it will go and get the relevant packages. So I'll show you how to do that. This is an incredibly valuable thing to know how to do. It's not necessary just for ggplot, but for any number of specialized uses, oftentimes they're going to be packages you're going to want to use. So the first command you need to do is install dot packages and you're going to pass it an argument of the name of the package you'd like to install. Uh, these packages are going to be the ones that are hosted in the CRAN. If you remember from our first video, uh, visiting that comprehensive R archive network, that's where these things are stored. So install packages, you need to pass it a string with the name of the package you wish for. So we have our open quote, we have the package we're after, close quote, close paren, and I'm going to hit control R. All right. And and because of the various levels of write permissions throughout Microsoft Windows, it's asking me if I'd like to use a personal library. This is a question that's about where the package files themselves are going to be stored. Not something you need to worry about too much. If you have an issue like this pop up, you can click yes and keep moving just fine. It's going to ask me where I want to locate it. I'm satisfied with that location. And now here's an important question, which CRAN mirror would I like to use? Now I'm going to choose the one that is geographically closest to me. As you can see, there's a large variety. I'm in Nebraska, so the closest one is going to be in Kansas. All right. Now R is going to get to work and it's going to go and find the list of packages that we need to install. Now we told that we wanted ggplot2, but ggplot2 has some dependencies. It has other packages that it needs information from to operate. So what's happening right now is R is downloading one at a time each of those packages. And you can see the feedback over here in the console. It is getting each one in a row and it's telling me a little bit about the speed at which things are coming in. All right, so that means the package is on our hard drive. It's ready for us to use, but to get it up and running, to have it actually available to us, to have the functions it contains at our command within R, we need to load that package. So we're going to do that with the require command. Uh, we'll just require ggplot2 and run that. There you are. Now we're ready for it. So not too terribly complicated, something you're going to find yourself doing an awful lot. Uh, this will become something, become something that's almost thoughtless to you over time. You'll have a few packages that in whatever particular application you end up making a lot of use of. And you'll start off every time you open up R with requiring those. So again, this is Ed from my Bring Back Today. We did a brief look at how to get packages loaded up into R. Keep coming back to these videos. We're going to make you dangerous with this data analysis.